Kevin, uh, yeah. any, any uh, counts on the St. Patrick's Day parade this past well, weekend? You know, I, I could tell you that I was down there from uh, 1130 to close to the end of it, and um, by far uh, it was more than what we saw last year. I don't mm. couldn't tell you the number, but, you know, I'm so proud of uh, what Main Street Martinsburg has done for the city of Martinsburg and the volunteers that they have and the sponsors because the music was fabulous, the the kids dancing, doing the Irish dances were, were, were wonderful. It was just a, a great day all around. Everybody was having fun and nobody getting out of hand, which is which is always a good thing. And, you know, the police department made their presence known. They were there and, and the uh, city workers, uh, Department of Public Works, take their day and, and they, they're they there to clean up. You get you go down there a half hour, and an hour after an event, you don't even know they're there because they clean mm-hmm. it up so much. A little crisp, but the weather cooperated nicely too. Well, you know, uh, you know, the, as they would say, that would be a soft day, a soft summer day in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, it's not because yeah, it was a, not. It was not. Uh, yeah. it, it was typical of an Irish day. You know, mm-hmm. nice and crisp mm-hmm. and sunny. So, yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Well, yeah. Done. Great. I mean, they, those the, that that organization throws some wonderful events. I mean, you know, we're going two weeks in a row, two weekends in a row. We're going to see about five thousand people. In, in downtown this weekend also so it's a it's a great opportunity to showcase what the city of Martinsburg has and and how how we continue to grow and move forward and and uh, people are all excited about it I think last year we had 12,000 for st. Patrick's Day Robbie Blair was telling us and they're expecting maybe 15 this year well I, you know what I think he may have hit it uh, I couldn't tell you the numbers but I think he may have hit that number it was it was packed I yeah. mean and not uncomfortably but it was there were plenty of people. Thankfully, had tons of food vendors this year. There weren't long lines. I, I enjoyed it. I, I probably saw 20, 30 people I haven't seen in a while. It was, it was fun. I, I enjoyed myself. And we didn't run into one another. That's how that that's what tells I, you what kind of a crowd we I had. I ran into your better half. It was well, a better deal for me. That's a, Sweet. <laughs> for her, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, home show is this weekend, a Saturday and Sunday at the Roundhouse. Uh, Kevin, uh, people coming to the Roundhouse that haven't been there since the home show last year, like myself, for instance, will we notice any differences a year later, any improvements made? Well, I, I think now that we've been down there for one year, uh, some of the things you may not have noticed is, you know, I think we're going to be more in tune with uh, uh, the parking, uh, how, to, how to park people down there. Uh, it looked like everything worked well, but on the the inside, it, you know, it got a little messed up and... Uh, you know, people were stuck there. They couldn't get out because uh, we didn't we didn't leave any exits for them to mm-hmm. if they wanted to leave early. So, you know, this year we we put together a, a volunteer team just to identify all the parking within uh, the facility itself and also throughout the the city, the downtown corridor. You know, there are four four or five parking lots within a two and a half a block of the the uh, roundhouse in the city which last year every one of them were were full and um, we were able to have uh, EPTA take the trolley which is owned by the roundhouse and pick people up at each and every one of those parking lots to to transport them back so they you know we're going to have parking at Union Dodge parking at uh parking at the new parking lot on uh on Ray Street across from the police station and all the other facilities, all free parking in, in downtown Martinsburg on the weekends. Yeah, Matt Miller. Is the overpass open as well? So if someone doesn't maybe want to jump on that trolley, they could walk down to the train station yeah, and the just train, go over? The, the train station, we hope that people take advantage of the, of, of the nice day it's supposed to be to be able to walk down through our train station across the of the bridge and come and enter. We had a lot of people entering that way last mm-hmm. year because uh, you could park at the train station too. There's free okay. parking at the train station. Just because you see a green top, which is a permit parking, that uh, doesn't apply on Saturday. So every 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 spot is open for, for, for the taking of that day. Yeah, that area of town is just so beautiful right now. You know, when you look, uh, our daughter uh, recently was in uh, production over at the Apollo Civic Theater. So driving in and out of there, you know, multiple times each week and and then the week of the show and everything. And I would park down in the the parking area there at the train station and then walk up to the Apollo and just looking out across everything there. uh, It is a a picturesque setting for an event like this. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, that whole corridor on Martin Street, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that is the streetscape that 
that we're moving forward with in the city of Martinsburg, any type of programs or any any uh, upgrades of any streets or sidewalks or anything, that's how you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a picturesque throughout the city as time goes on. And, and we've been able to capitalize on that by helping uh, the Apollo with some funding to be able to, to move forward in their vision and also with the, the Roundhouse. So uh, a lot of great things happening in, in the city of Martinsburg and, and in the downtown corridor. And hey, when's that? Uh, I haven't been there in a little while. When's the marquee going up? Well, uh, you know, it's funny I ask because I had a, a sat down and I talked to Michael Noel the other day and, and uh, it's in production now and, and they're hoping to have it for November of this year. Yeah, okay. so it's it, it's gonna look it's gonna look fabulous when and we prepared yeah. for that when when we did that streetscape we took down some of the wires and relocated them underground so that they've been able to, to be able to put that marquee up without any problems. JB, well, it's everything seems to be moving forward with the city, which is uh, which is nice. Um, the what is now we had we had the the St. Patrick's Day festival now we have the the home show coming up of course. What is the next big event for the city in downtown Martinsburg? Well, I, I believe that it's the uh, the wine festival. Uh, so I think that comes at the end of May. Uh, and now, because of the new legislation passed, you can have the same wines other states have in West Virginia. Because they, they increased the content to 15.5 to be able to import some Italian wines and other wines from around the area that you couldn't get into West Virginia before. Well, I, I'm, I'm not too up on the wine scene, but uh, yeah. I, I'll take your word for it, Rob. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hornby was uh, the author of that bill. Uh, that's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, uh, those guys did a great job down there this year. I, I've heard nothing but good things about uh, um, Mike Height and Mike Hornby from individuals that uh, worked with them down there. So I you know, thank them for, for the work that they did. We didn't hear any conversation. and that's yeah, kind We're of, not talking about anything right now, are we? That, that, I, what, what are you talking about? That, that, you, that, that died talk, down. What are you talking about? Uh, completely that uh let's let's go at uh i don't know i don't know what you're talking about city what do you what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you i'll call what it the talk, hbo talk. tax since you don't want to call it the bo tax <laughs> there hasn't been any discussion about that well that's a good thing yeah. maybe they're getting the message how about that I, I just was curious if you'd heard anything about it yourself <laughs> I, I so that was the best thing to come out of the legislative session for the city of martinsburg was the fact there was no movement on the bno didn't uh did did not say that I, I, I was just asking that. Was that the, you know, okay, the now that's a question. Yeah, <laughs> you know, was that? You were telling me. You were telling me you're, that. Was you're not question. Frank Costello in front of the Key <laughs> Farmer Commission here. You know, the, we're not looking to get you indicted later on based on what you say here. Colin, can you grab us the thumb screws and the bright light? <laughs> Go ahead, bring them on. <laughs> no, uh, you, you know can't what? break me. You can't break me. <laughs> the, the municipal league has worked very, very well with uh, the legislature and, and educating them in, uh, about the importance of not peeling away the ability uh, for cities to to operate. Because you know, at, at a point there, they're, they're peeling away different taxes and. You know, not believe me. I got to pay these taxes too. But mm -hmm. cities, you know, counties don't have to pay. They don't have to pay police. They don't have to. They don't have garbage collections. They don't do the streets. They're not in charge of any sewer or water lines. Uh, we are. You know, all cities are, and, and they have to be paid. And you you start taking away something that I'll uh, use that HBO tax that you're mm -hmm. talking about. That uh, you know, that's that's a nine million dollar out of our out of our budget. You know, and our budget's about forty-three million. So, if you have a business, uh, Jonathan, you have a business. If you remove twenty percent of my revenue, twenty percent of re your revenue, uh, uh, how are you going to operate? What are you going to do? We're not going to be collecting trash, cleaning the streets, or any of that Thank stuff you. anymore. Thank you. So, so he answered my question. The question for me. Thank I you. agree. I mean, I, cities need. I mean, in order for the legislature to take away something like BNO, they need to have a funding mechanism that replaces yeah. that money from day one. And I and I think you know, not that I think I, I know the legislators know that the ones that I've talked to, and and uh, if, if if something like that is to happen then at that point uh, my suggestion and the league's suggestion has been let's let's have, have put something together uh, let's have a a committee meeting let's get a group of uh, municipalities and legislators together and hash things out and come up with a plan because there is no plan and, and for them to say the plans on you is wrong 
Uh, you know, we have we have our plan. Our plan's been in effect for for years. It's working very well. And and you want to just strip it? Why should we have to be the ones looking for it? You're the you're the ones that are taking it away. Does the city of Martinsburg have a budget surplus like the overall state does? So when people, I think people get a misconception. Um, just like any other business, uh, if you don't uh, if you don't you budget accordingly. And let's say for for example. We budget for 50 police officers. We're down nine. So if you don't fill those positions, uh, of course you're going to have a, a, a excess funding at the end. But that money still is needed to be able to to fund those positions. Have we been down? Um, is this something that that's been ongoing for a few years now, or are we just recently down nine officers? Well, uh, you know, it seems like it's been going to that trend now for for a year or two, and and uh, you know, it's our hopes that we're going to be able to you know attract um, quality uh, people to become uh, law enforcement officers. We've we've made some very uh, uh, great strides over the last year as far as the increase of our starting pay and bonuses to bring people on. Uh, so, I, I mean, hopefully we're going to see that change. Do you find like other uh, public sector jobs in the Eastern Panhandle, you end up bringing people in and being sort of a farm system and losing people to Virginia, Maryland because they're paying more money? Not necessarily with the police department because uh, police or fire, they're, we, we, we take care of our, our police fire. We, we, we as a city take care of our employees and we take a look at um, the surrounding areas and and, and I, I think we've proven that last year we've they every every employee got about a 15 percent increase in their pay to bring people up to you know current standards so right now we are the highest paying police force in the area and and fire department so with lower numbers, is it just a matter of, of finding candidates who are kind of interested in heading into that field? Yeah, so, you know, you know the um, police work is not mm -hmm. uh, what it used to be. You know, there's used to have a lot of people that would want to become a police officer now with everything that you're, you're seeing and reading on social media and everything. It makes it very tough. But, um, you know, we're, we're confident that with our recruiting uh, mechanisms that we have in place that mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be able to fulfill those, fill those jobs up and be able to have, be at full force in the very near future. I know in recent years there was a program put into place to help um, building owners in downtown Martinsburg kind of redo some of the facades, the outsides, uh, neaten things up, paint things, uh, really get the city looking good. How effective was that program, and is that something still going on? It's a very effective program. Uh, I mean, if you if you were ever to come down uh, to City Hall, uh, Shane Farthing has pictures of what what that has done for uh, buildings that had taken advantage of it. Uh, as far as any funding left over, I know that uh, in this budget through CBDG grants that we put together, uh, we put a, uh, I want to say $100,000 for an emergency fund away for, so if, if somebody has an emergency at their house but can't afford, let's say the HVAC goes or the boiler goes, that they're able to apply for this type of funding up to a certain amount to be able to help uh, help with that. So, you know, the city has, has some programs and, and plans in place for helping individuals, with not only with their facade, but also with the major uh, major happenings that may happen throughout the year. And that's el anybody's eligible for that, Kevin? Uh I, I, I want to say uh, I don't think anybody's eligible. It depends on income as far as mm -hmm. the emergency funding would be. I mean, you know, if somebody's making 200000 a year, I don't think that's uh, going to be something that uh, that they'd be qualified for. It's, yeah. it's for really lower income, mm -hmm. lower to moderate income individuals. Can I ask, um, I saw a thing on the Facebook about the the – vape cbd store i guess on the way into town can you address what what's going on with that at all do you have any idea well i i could tell you what i know is yes there was uh there was uh, an arrest made and confisc uh, confiscated materials that uh, were um, uh, found that were illegal substances within that facility down on queen street um, currently uh, there's a more investigated process going on it's within the legal system i think at this point uh, uh talking to the chief that we're going to take a look at uh, our um, uh, our drug ordinance uh, 
to see if we can uh, do something about um, closing the place down or, or whatever we need to do. So, and let me you point out that Ch- Chief Swartwood will be on the program at nine thirty this morning. Well, then uh, you will be able to ask most that definitely. Question. But I mean, because you come under you come under the the, the underpass that they just redid. And on the right, they've got those big old beautiful buildings that they're getting ready to put. uh, Creekside plan. Creekside plan, which is absolutely beautiful. I didn't even know five years ago, I didn't even know there was water there until they cut it back. And I've lived here 27 years. Um, But then on the left, I mean, I got to say, as somebody who loves Martinsburg, it's a bit of an eyesore when you see uh, the neon lights and stuff. I'm not, not a fan of it. Well, you know what? I agree. Uh, but um, unfortunately, we don't have, uh, you know, we don't own the property. Oh, uh, no, no, of course. Of course. I'm not. I'm just saying aesthetically, I'm, I've, I'm not a fan of it. And I, I don't think a lot of people are. Let me ask one more aesthetic question. The front of City Hall, I see they're doing a lot of work on redoing City Hall, which is going to be amazing. Is the front of City Hall, the facade of the building, is that going to look any different, or are you just doing the inside? No, uh, th- that'll look different. Uh, it'll have have a different look to it altogether uh, when when you're done. It's going to have a, a similar but but different uh, look to it. It'll be conducive to what our downtown is. And you'll see a little bump out. Uh, we're going to take away two uh, parking spots out front, so there'll be a bump out area where the flags will go up and nice. place to sit. Are they um, are they on uh, are they on target time wise? That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what that t- no, I mean you know th- they say that it's uh, uh, spring summer of twenty twenty four and and you know just like any you know any project that we've done with with city that I've been involved with or any type of big projects like that they they, they run into areas where they have some issues or problems that sometimes bumps it back but um C- cities take time yeah we're we're hopeful that uh that everything is moving forward at that pace because you know although we we love the temporary space we're at uh, we're a little bit removed from downtown mm-hmm. because uh you know typically on any given day i'd be walking up and down the streets but it, you know when you're uh, you know what's that old saying out of sight out of mind and i'd hate to say that but you know, we need to be more within our downtown corridor. They're doing a couple of major renovations in downtown Frederick. There was an all-girls school that's being turned into apartments, and there's the old uh, newspaper building that's being turned into uh, another multi-use facility of some sort. And when you're when you're working in a city, it, it takes time. You have to make sure that all the historical things are followed. And as we all know, anyone who's tried to get anything built in the last couple of years, the supply chain still isn't 100 yeah, percent. That's, cor- that's correct. S- speaking of that, that was what a few years ago when they tore the old John Street school down. I was surprised that they didn't try to repurpose it like they have so many schools throughout the region and to turn them into more affordable housing or, or apartments. I thought that was mm-hmm. I thought that might have might have been a mistake. And that's one of our our downfalls here in the city is we don't have affordable housing. Our 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 local uh, uh housing authority hasn't expanded their uh, footprint since 1982. Mm-hmm. And there's a huge waiting list for people to to get uh well, I know on the the lower income senior housing side. Yep. The the housing department does a great job. I mean, they've got they've got some great buildings that are well run, that are clean, um, and then you've got you know places like King's Daughters and stuff like that, which is phenomenal, where they really take care of the people. But we that, definitely uh, need more. Yeah, King's Daughters is private. Right, I know King's Daughters is private. Paula, who runs it, great. They do a great job there. Hey, before you go today, I know you're a baseball guy at heart, and I understand you're throwing out a first pitch. I I did not know that. You didn't know that? Oh, Trip Tobin posted on our Facebook page. Well, yeah, you, know, you know the renovations they've done at. Uh, geez, I came in football. Up, right? So <laughs> you better get you better get your arm loose. You don't want to you look like um, I don't know. So it says here, Trip Tobin says today we'll have our first pitch festivities at the new P.O. Faulkner Stadium. If you haven't seen this, by the way, since they've done the renovation work there, it's really quite a gem. All are invited to attend to see if Mayor Kevin Knowles can throw a strike. I assume that meant you were throwing out the first pitch. That well, sounds I, like I, it to I, me. Well, I know what I'm doing this afternoon. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have to find someone to uh, have a game of catch with today. Dana, can you uh, take note up. of that and get some? I better balm. get a hold of John Lowry. <laughs> get some balm for uh, Kevin's arm. Get him loosed up, loosened up. Yeah. I better get a hold of John Lowry today. Oh, yeah, you gotta get in touch with him, man. You gotta get that uh, that wheel loose, baby. Right? Have you been? I, I know the city had uh, had some contributions there too, P.O. You know, Faulkner, right? Yes, uh, you know, well, it was a it was a combination of uh, city, county, and state funding to be able to make that happen. So it's it's great when when all organizations work closely together and make things like this happen to better the community. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I'm listening to the Trips interview with uh, our sports guys in the afternoon when he was on last week. He mentioned, I think. Uh, Senator Jason Barrett contributed a chunk of money, and I think there's some other elected officials uh, who did as well, all to make that. And they and they went to uh, the auction when they tore down Hagerstown's Municipal Stadium over there. They went to the auction and bought the mm-hmm. seats. I think they I can't remember how many it was that they bought, but uh, if you look at it, it's uh, if you haven't been to P.O. Faulkner in a year, you're going to be blown away when you see it now. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to go watch a game. I bet. Well, I better get up there early today and uh, <laughs> warm up before that first pitch. Yeah. yeah, it's only thirty degrees. You'll be all right. <laughs> It'll be sixty by that time. Yeah, you'll meet Mr. Tommy John. Find out what he's all about. <laughs> hey, uh, a couple minutes left. Let's talk about the home show this weekend. What time do you recommend people get there? Well, the home show is from ten to six on Saturday and ten to four on on Sunday. And you know, um, there's really no set time for you to arrive. I mean, doors open at ten o'clock. So if you want to get there early before the crowd, uh, that's great. But the I don't know when when the crowd gets to be big. You know, it depends on how people's daily life is going that day. But but uh, we're excited about to be able. To, it was sold out now over a month, and uh, we're we're excited to be able to to be down at the the roundhouse. And you know, we've we signed a contract for five years to be down there, so we're going to have a, a home, and hopefully that's going to be our home moving forward. You know, the roundhouse has also got the. The farmers market that they were able to just uh, uh, land for for from Main Street, so you're going to see a farmers market down there. Not for this weekend, but moving forward when it comes summer and springtime. So we're excited, and we're also doing a a live um, a live wire safety uh, dis- demonstration. demonstration. Uh, Potomac Edison is going to be or First Energy is going to be putting a, on a on a little show, a little exhibition about down wires and what what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Mm. Uh, so that's at two o'clock. I understand Bodwell has volunteered to step on a live wire. Well, he show. said he'd hold one end. Well, I'm holding one end. If Kevin's got the other, I'll, you know? I'll hold one. You hold the other. Solidarity. Kevin we'll, being with we'll the be dunk right. tank with the other live end of the wire. So that should all work. So out that's well. at two o'clock on Saturday and Sunday. So if anybody wants to see that, that's a good time for them to come down mm. and see that. So it's a good thing for kids to see. What, yeah. You know, stay away. Stay away. Right. Yeah. Or you know, even even people that are driving and see a downed wire, you don't just get out and no. Uh, throw it to the side yeah. of the road yeah we're going to be out there we've got bodwell insurance we've got a booth out yeah. there this weekend we're excited it's going to be a lot That's of fun great. will there be some food and vendors yes things we're like going to well? have we're going to have food food uh food food four, food, 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 food. <laughs> four, best, best kind yeah. four food trucks we're going to have mountaineer right. uh barbecue with uh, travis bishop we're going to have almost heaven uh we're gonna have fed up and um uh oh uh, we're going to have um not the, they're not these donuts now. They're they're these nuts. They're called they're Aren't called they? they're they're called something else. I thought uh, that's what they were called. Well, they changed the name. It's it's a flatbread, mm-hmm. okay. and and it uh, the the acronym. I'm not. I don't want to say <laughs> uh, what they call not it on the air. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, H H D Boyd will be here by the way in the yeah, nine o'clock hour. His he, food he, truck will be there. He's got, too. Yeah, fed up. So yeah. we're we're excited about the whole. Oh, it's man. gonna be it's gonna be good. Travis's barbecue is always great. I yeah, some yeah the and, and uh, Scott Geary, Scott and Jen Geary, they had they do a great job. They they come up with some really unique names. You know, they had a they have another uh, organization called Doggy Doggy Style, and uh, it's just they're they're pretty creative. A lot of double entendre in those. Uh, yes. <laughs> Hey, let's uh, let's uh, see you on the over the weekend, Mr. Knowles, and say goodbye to you this morning. Yeah, well, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, and thank you for what WNRNR does for the community, and thank you for your sponsorship. We really appreciate it. I understand you also be running for re-election as mayor. No, oh, yes, yeah. Did, did you? I read that somewhere. Did you read that? Yeah. Well, hey, well, hey, you know what? Yes, if you're asking me that question, yes, I am. I will be re- I'll be running again in 2024, and and uh, God willing. Uh, Continue to be mayor of Martinsburg. 
Well, congratulations on the announcement. Thank you. That's uh, Mayor Kevin Knowles.